Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about visual measuring, only this time we're going to talk about it for proportion. Because when you're in the early stages of a drawing, capturing the correct relationships between the different objects in your scene is really essential. If you get it wrong here, the rest of the painting is going to be sort of an uphill battle, trying to correct for those early mistakes. Now in past videos, we've talked about using visual measuring for determining the angle of lines, and this is how you carve out a shape from observation. But we've not talked about the second type, which is visual measuring for proportion, for these spatial relationships. Just like before, if I want to measure this cup, all I'm going to need is a tool that is straight. And generally speaking, if you're drawing, you're going to have a pencil. So a pencil is going to be our tool. And with your arm held fully straight out, locking your elbow, you're going to hold the pencil either perfectly vertically or horizontally. And the first step is to just determine your basic unit of measurement. And this is going to be different every time. So I'm going to hold out my pencil horizontally, and I'm going to try and figure out the width of the handle. So using my thumb as sort of the end measuring mark, I'm going to mark off how wide this handle is. And as long as I keep my thumb here, I can then move my arm and I still have that measurement. So now I'm going to compare that base unit against some other dimension in this object. So in this case, I want to figure out how wide the handle is relative to the entire width of the cup. So here it looks like it's about 2.5 of that original unit wide. And so I can mark that down on my page. And I might not actually draw the cup at this point. I'll just put in some horizontal lines with some little tick marks to show my measurements. Now, of course, this is a rough estimation. I'm not using a ruler, but it gets a little closer to the overall proportions. So that little sequence I did there, I'm going to be doing over and over. And each time I do it, I'm going to get a little more information about the scene. So let's get one more measurement here. This time I'm going to try and figure out the top ellipse of this cup as it relates to the overall vertical height. So here I'm going to have a new unit of measurement. So with my arm outstretched, I'm going to measure vertically the degree of the top ellipse, just the height of that oval. And then marking that with my thumb, I'm going to then compare that to the total height of the cup. And once I've figured out this, I can mark that down on my page. So you can see what I'm drawing here doesn't really look anything like a cup. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm plotting out relationships. It's a little bit like making a blueprint because once I have enough of these measurements in place, I can begin to lay in my actual contour lines. So depending on how accurate your drawing needed to be, you could do many, many more of these measurements, and each time you're going to start out with a different temporary unit. Now sometimes there are sort of measurement standards. If you're measuring a human, it might be easy to think of things in terms of the height of one head. So you could measure the vertical height of a head, Mark that off with your thumb, and then compare that either vertically or horizontally to other parts of the body. And there's no real reason for this, it's just something that people seem to gravitate towards. The head is easy to measure, and so it's a nice building block. And of course, this technique, using visual measuring for proportions, is easily interchangeable with using visual measuring for angles. After all, they use the same tool, an outstretched arm and your pencil. Really all these things do is help you take what's in front of you and to record it down onto your paper. So they might seem slow and methodical at first, but once you get used to doing it, it's just like breathing. Now, of course, these techniques really do work better if you have a physical object in front of you. This really does not work the same way if you're just using a photograph. But when you are doing something from direct observation, it's these sort of techniques that are really going to help your drawing look much more accurate. So get out there and do a little still life or maybe some life drawing and try out some visual measuring. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.